Panini pronounced pa in i, Florida, 4th century BCE or 6th to 5th century BCE was an ancient Sanskrit philologist, grammarian, and a revered scholar in ancient India. Considered the father of linguistics, Panini likely lived in the northwest Indian subcontinent during the Mahajanapada era. He is said to have been born in Shalatula of ancient Gandhara, which likely was near modern Lahore, a small town at the junction of the Indus and Kabul rivers, which falls in the Swabi district of modern Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, Pakistan. The area was then a satrapy of the Achaemenid Empire following the Achaemenid conquest of the Indus Valley, which technically made him in all probability an Achaemenid Persian subject. Panini is known for his text Ashtadayi, a sutra style treatise on Sanskrit grammar, 3,959 verses, or rules on linguistics, syntax, and semantics in eight chapters, which is the foundational text of the Vyakarana branch of the Vedanga, the auxiliary scholarly disciplines of the Vedic period. His aphoristic text attracted numerous beshiya commentaries, of which Patanjali's Mahabhasya is the most famous in Hindu traditions. His ideas influenced and attracted commentaries from scholars of other Indian religions such as Buddhism. Panini's analysis of noun compounds still forms the basis of modern linguistic theories of compounding in Indian languages. Panini's comprehensive and scientific theory of grammar is conventionally taken to mark the start of classical Sanskrit. His systematic treatise inspired and made Sanskrit the preeminent Indian language of learning and literature for two millennia. Panini's theory of morphological analysis was more advanced than any equivalent Western theory before the 20th century. His treatise is generative and descriptive, and has been compared to the Turing machine, wherein the logical structure of any computing device has been reduced to its essentials using an idealized mathematical model. The name Panini is a patronymic meaning descendant of Panina. His full name was Daxiputra Panini. According to verses 1.75.13 and 3.251.12 of Patanjali's Mahabhasya, with the first part suggesting his mother's name was Daxi. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Date and context. Nothing definite is known about when Panini lived, not even in which century he lived. Most scholarship places him in or before mid-4th century BCE, possibly in the 6th or 5th century BCE. Panini's grammar defines classical Sanskrit, so Panini is chronologically placed in the later part of the Vedic period. Panini must have lived sometime between 7th and 5th centuries BCE. An influential argument was proposed by A. B. Keith that the Sanskrit text that most matches the language described by Panini is the Aitareya Brahmana. Some proposals have attempted to date Panini from references within the text. The first proposal is based on Sutra 2.1.70 of Panini, which mentions Kumarasramana, with the word sramana interpreted to imply that he may have had Buddhist nuns in mind, and therefore he should be placed after Gautama Buddha. Other scholars question this theory because nuns in the Indian traditions existed outside of and before Buddhism, such as in Jainism. The second proposal is based on the occurrence of the word Yavanani in 4.1.49, either Greek woman or Greek alphabet. Because of this occurrence of Yavanani, some suggest a terminus post-Quem as 519 BCE, i.e. the time of Darius I's Behistun inscription that included the province of Gandhara IAST, Gandhara. However, in 1862 Max Muller objected to this interpretation with the statement that there is no reason to assume that Yavana meant Greek. Before and in the century Panini lived, and it could as well have been a reference in a Semitic or a South Indian context, it is not certain whether Panini used writing for the composition of his work, though it is generally agreed that he knew of a form of writing, based on references to words such as lippi script, and lipikara scribe, in section 3.2 of the Astadayi. Panini cites ten grammarians and linguists before him, none of whom can be chronologically placed with any certainty. The ten Vedic scholar names he quotes are of Apasali, Kashyapa, Gargya, Galava, Kakravarmana, Bharadvaja, Sakatayana, Sakalya, Sanaka, and Svotayana. Both Brihatkatha and Manusri Mula Kalpa mention Panini to have been a contemporary with the Nanda king. While Panini is considered a Hindu scholar of grammar and linguistics, his text is also an important historical source of cultural and geographical information. 
His work is significant such as in including the word Vasudeva which scholars disagree whether it refers to a deity or a person. The concept of dharma is attested in his sutra 4.4.41 as, dharmam karati or, he observes dharma duty, righteousness. Cf. Taittiriya Upanishad 1.11 Topic. Biography and location Nothing certain is known about Panini's personal life. According to the Mahabhasya of Patanjali, his mother's name was Daxi. Patanjali calls Panini Daxiputra meaning son of Daxi at several places in the Mahabhasya. Rambhadracharya suggests that the name of his father was Panina, from which the name Panini could be grammatically derived. In an inscription of Siladitya VII of Vallabhi, he is called Salatariya, which means, man from Salatora. This means Panini lived in Salatora of ancient Gandhara, which likely was near Lahore, a town at the junction of Indus and Kabul rivers, which falls in the Swabi district of modern Pakistan. According to the memoirs of 7th century Chinese scholar Xuanzang, there was a town called Sualadaluo on the Indus where Panini was born, and he composed the Kingning Lun. Sanskrit, Vyakarana. According to Hartmut Scarf, Panini lived in Gandhara close to the borders of the Achaemenid Empire, and Gandhara was then an Achaemenian satrapy. He must therefore have been technically a Persian subject, but his work shows no awareness of the Persian language. According to Patrick Olivell, Panini's text and references to him elsewhere suggest that he was clearly a northerner, probably from the northwestern region. <inaudible> <inaudible> Legends and later reception Panini is mentioned in Indian fables and ancient texts. The Panchatantra, for example, mentions that Panini was killed by a lion. Panini was depicted on a five rupee Indian postage stamp in August 2004. Topic: <laughs> Astadayi. The Astadayi is the central part of Panini's grammar and by far the most complex. The Ashtadayi is the oldest linguistic and grammar text of Sanskrit surviving in its entirety, and Panini refers to older texts and authors such as the Unadasutra, Datupatha, and Gunapata some of which have only survived in part. It complements the Vedic ancillary sciences such as the Niruktas, Nyantas, and Shiksha. Regarded as extremely compact without sacrificing completeness, it would become the model for later specialist technical texts or sutras. The text takes material from lexical lists as input and describes algorithms to be applied to them for the generation of well formed words. It is highly systematized and technical. Inherent in its approach are the concepts of the phoneme, the morpheme, and the root. His rules have a reputation for perfection, that is, they tersely describe Sanskrit morphology unambiguously and completely. A consequence of his grammar's focus on brevity is its highly unintuitive structure, reminiscent of modern notations such as the Bacchus Naur form. His sophisticated logical rules and technique have been widely influential in ancient and modern linguistics. The Astadayi was not the first description of Sanskrit grammar, but it is the earliest that has survived in full. The Astadayi became the foundation of Vyakarana, a Vedanga. In the Astadayi, language is observed in a manner that has no parallel among Greek or Latin grammarians. Panini's grammar, according to Renu and Filioset, defines the linguistic expression and a classic that set the standard for Sanskrit language. Panini made use of a technical metalanguage consisting of a syntax, morphology, and lexicon. This metalanguage is organized according to a series of meta rules, some of which are explicitly stated while others can be deduced. The Astadayi consists of 3,959 sutras or aphoristic threads in eight chapters, which are each subdivided into four sections or padas. Pada. This text attracted a famous and one of the most ancient basya commentary called the Mahabhasya. The author of Mahabhasya is named Patanjali, who may or may not be the same person as the one who authored Yogasutras. The Mahabhasya, literally, Great Commentary, is more than a commentary on Ashtadayi. It is the earliest known philosophical text of the Hindu grammarians. Non-Hindu texts and traditions on grammar emerged after Patanjali, some of which include the Sanskrit grammar text of Jainendra of Jainism and the Chandra school of Buddhism. Topic. 
Rules The first two sutras are as follows 1.1.1 Verdira Daik Verdira Daik 1.1.2 Adanguna, Adanguna in these sutras, the capital letters are special metalinguistic symbols, they are called it, it markers or, in later writers such as Katyayana and Patanjali, Anubandis. See below. The C and N refer to Shiva Sutras for I, O, C, and 3, E, O, N, respectively, forming what are known as the Pratyaharas, comprehensive designations, A, I, C, N. They denote the list of phonemes I, O, and E, O, respectively. The T, T, appearing in its variant form, D, in both sutras is also an it marker. Sutra 1.1.70 defines it as indicating that the preceding phoneme does not represent a list, but a single phoneme, encompassing all suprasegmental features such as accent and nasality. For further example, at at and at at represent a, a and a, a respectively. When a sutra defines a technical term, the term defined comes at the end, so the first sutra should have properly been Adaya Verdir instead of Verdir Adaic. However the order is reversed to have a good luck word at the very beginning of the work, Verdir happens to mean prosperity in its non-technical use. Thus the two sutras consist of a list of phonemes, followed by a technical term. The final interpretation of the two sutras above is thus. 1.1.1, A, I, O are called VDDHI. 1.1.2, A, E, O are called Guna. At this point, one can see they are definitions of terminology. Guna and VDDHI are the terms for the full and the lengthened Indo European oblaut grades, respectively. <laughs> List of IT markers Its or Anubandis are defined in P1.3.2 through P1.3.8. These definitions refer only to items taught in the grammar or its ancillary texts such as the Datupatha. This fact is made clear in P1.3.2 by the word Upadese, which is then continued in the following six rules by Anuvarti, ellipsis. As these Anubandis are metalinguistic markers and not pronounced in the final derived form, pada word, they are elided by p1.3.9 tesa lopa there is elision of that i.e. any of the preceding items which have been defined as an it. Accordingly, Panini defines the Anubandis as follows. Nasalized vowels, e.g. bonho. Cf. p. 1.3.2. A final consonant, hal. Cf. P. 1.3.3.2, a, except a dental, m and s in verbal or nominal endings. Cf. P. 1.3.4. Initial nyi tu du. Cf. P. 1.3.5. Initial s of a suffix pratyaya. Cf. P. 1.3.6. Initial palatals and cerebrals of a suffix. Cf. P. 1.3.7. Initial L, S, and K but not in a tadita secondary suffix. Cf. P. 1.3.8. A few examples of elements that contain its are as follows. Sup nominal suffix S it C strong case endings Slew elision Sap active marker PIT Lup elision Appa stems Cap Tap Dap Liap 7.1.37 L it K it Kateva Luck elision San desiderative C it M it N it Ni causative Ni I stems Nip Nin Knees Tin verbal suffix Lun aorist Lin precative S it GHU class of verbal stems 1.1.20 GHI 1.4.7 Topic Auxiliary texts Panini's Ashtadayi has three associated texts. The Shiva Sutras are a brief but highly organized list of phonemes. The Datupatha is a lexical list of verbal roots sorted by present class. 
The Gunapata is a lexical list of nominal stems grouped by common properties. Topic: <inaudible> Shiva Sutras. The Shiva Sutras describe a phonemic notational system in the 14 initial lines preceding the Ashtadhyayi. The notational system introduces different clusters of phonemes that serve special roles in the morphology of Sanskrit and are referred to throughout the text. Each cluster, called a pratyahara, ends with a dummy sound called an anubanda, the so-called it index, which acts as a symbolic referent for the list. Within the main text, these clusters, referred through the anubandas, are related to various grammatical functions. Topic: <laughs> Datupatha. The datupatha is a lexicon of Sanskrit verbal roots subservient to the ashtadhyayi. It is organized by the ten present classes of Sanskrit, i.e. the roots are grouped by the form of their stem in the present tense. The ten present classes of Sanskrit are Buadhyaya root full grade thematic presence Adadhyaya root presence Juhati Adhyaya reduplicated presence Div Adhyaya ya thematic presence Suadhyaya new presence Tadadhyaya root zero grade thematic presence Rudadaya an infix presence Tanadaya no presence Kriadaya ni presence Kuradaya I a presence causatives the small number of class 8 verbs are a secondary group derived from class 5 roots and class 10 is a special case in that any verb can form class 10 presence then assuming causative meaning the roots specifically listed as belonging to class 10 are those for which any other form has fallen out of use causative deponents so to speak Gunapata The Gunapata is a list of groups of primitive nominal stems used by the Ashtadhyayi. Commentary After Panini, the Mahabhasya great commentary of Patanjali on the Ashtadhyayi is one of the three most famous works in Sanskrit grammar. It was with Patanjali that Indian linguistic science reached its definite form. The system thus established is extremely detailed as to shiksha phonology, including accent and vyakarana morphology. Syntax is scarcely touched, but nirukta etymology is discussed, and these etymologies naturally lead to semantic explanations. People interpret his work to be a defense of Panini, whose sutras are elaborated meaningfully. He also attacks Katyayana rather severely. But the main contributions of Patanjali lies in the treatment of the principles of grammar enunciated by him. Topic: <laughs> Additions. Rama Nath Sharma, The Astadhyayi of Panini, six vols, 2001, ISBN 8121500516. Otto Boatlink, Panini's Grammatic 1887, reprint 1998 ISBN 3-87548-198-4 Cater, Sumitra M., Astadhyayi of Panini, Austin, University of Texas Press, 1987. Reprint Delhi, Mutalal Banarsidass, 1989. ISBN 0-292-70394-5 Misra, Vidya Niwas, The Descriptive Technique of Panini, Mouton & Co., 1966. Vasu, Srisa Chandra, The Ashtadhyayi of Panini. Translated into English, Indian Press, Allahabad, 1898. <laughs> Bhattakavya The learning of Indian curriculum in late classical times had at its heart a system of grammatical study and linguistic analysis. The core text for this study was the Astadhyayi of Panini, the sine qua non of learning. This grammar of Panini had been the object of intense study for the ten centuries prior to the composition of the Bhattakavya. It was plainly Bhatti's purpose to provide a study aid to Panini's text by using the examples already provided in the existing grammatical commentaries in the context of the gripping and morally improving story of the Ramayana. To the dry bones of this grammar Bhatti has given juicy flesh in his poem. 
The intention of the author was to teach this advanced science through a relatively easy and pleasant medium. In his own words, This composition is like a lamp to those who perceive the meaning of words and like a hand mirror for a blind man to those without grammar. This poem, which is to be understood by means of a commentary, is a joy to those sufficiently learned, through my fondness for the scholar I have here slighted the dullard. Bhattacavya 22.33-34 Topic. Modern linguistics Panini's work became known in 19th-century Europe, where it influenced modern linguistics initially through Franz Bopp, who mainly looked at Panini. Subsequently, a wider body of work influenced Sanskrit scholars such as Ferdinand de Saussure, Leonard Bloomfield, and Roman Jakobson. Fritz Stahl discussed the impact of Indian ideas on language in Europe. After outlining the various aspects of the contact, Stahl notes that the idea of formal rules in language, proposed by Ferdinand de Saussure in 1894 and developed by Noam Chomsky in 1957 has origins in the European exposure to the formal rules of Paninian grammar. In particular, de Saussure, who lectured on Sanskrit for three decades, may have been influenced by Panini and Bartrahari. His idea of the unity of signifier signified in the sign somewhat resembles the notion of Svota. More importantly, the very idea that formal rules can be applied to areas outside of logic or mathematics may itself have been catalyzed by Europe's contact with the work of Sanskrit grammarians. De Saussure Panini, and the later Indian linguist Bhartrahari, had a significant influence on many of the foundational ideas proposed by Ferdinand de Saussure, professor of Sanskrit, who is widely considered the father of modern structural linguistics and with Charles S. Pierce on the other side, to semiotics, although the concept Saussure used was semiology. Saussure himself cited Indian grammar as an influence on some of his ideas. In his memoir sur le système primitif des voyelles dans les langues indo-européennes, memoir on the original system of vowels in the Indo-European languages, published in 1879, he mentions Indian grammar as an influence on his idea that reduplicated aorists represent imperfects of a verbal class. In his De l'emploi du génitif absolu en Sanskrit, on the use of the genitive absolute in Sanskrit, published in 1881, he specifically mentions Panini as an influence on the work. Prem Singh, in his foreword to the reprint edition of the German translation of Panini's Grammar in 1998, concluded that the effect Panini's work had on Indo European linguistics shows itself in various studies, and that a number of seminal works come to mind including Saussure's works and the analysis that gave rise to the laryngeal theory, further stating, this type of structural analysis suggests influence from Panini's analytical teaching. George Cardona, however, warns against overestimating the influence of Panini on modern linguistics, although Saussure also refers to predecessors who had taken this Paninian rule into account, it is reasonable to conclude that he had a direct acquaintance with Panini's work. As far as I am able to discern upon rereading Saussure's memoir, however, it shows no direct influence of Paninian grammar. Indeed, on occasion, Saussure follows a path that is contrary to Paninian procedure. <laughs> <laughs> Leonard Bloomfield The founding father of American structuralism, Leonard Bloomfield, wrote a 1927 paper titled on some rules of Panini. Topic: <laughs> Comparison with modern formal systems. Panini's grammar is the world's first formal system, developed well before the 19th century innovations of Gottlob Frege and the subsequent development of mathematical logic. In designing his grammar, Panini used the method of auxiliary symbols in which new affixes are designated to mark syntactic categories and the control of grammatical derivations. This technique, rediscovered by the logician Emile Post, became a standard method in the design of computer programming languages. Sanskritists now accept that Panini's linguistic apparatus is well described as an applied post system. Considerable evidence shows ancient mastery of context-sensitive grammars, and a general ability to solve many complex problems. Fritz Stahl has written that Panini is the Indian Euclid. Topic: 
Topic: Other works. Two literary works are attributed to Panini, though they are now lost. Jambavati Vijaya is a lost work cited by Rajashakara in Jalhana's Sukti Muktavali. A fragment is to be found in Ramayukta's commentary on Namalinganashasana. From the title it may be inferred that the work dealt with Krishna's winning of Jambavati in the underworld as his bride. Rajashakara in Jalhana's Sukti Muktavali Nama Panane Tasmai Yasmadevira Budhya Ado Vyakaranam Kaviyamanu Jambavatajayam Nama Panane Tasmai Yasmadavora Budhya Ado Vyakaranam Kaviyamanu Jambavatajayam Ascribed to Panini, Patala Vijaya is a lost work cited by Namisadu in his commentary on Kavyalankara of Rudrata. See also Vyakarana Bhattakavya Pingala Set and init roots List of Indian mathematicians Notes <laughs>